All right, so I, I want to talk about this today because it's newsworthy. And we're having the debate already again on what's going to happen next season. And debates about, well, they can't have they can't have any hockey next year uh, without fans in attendance. So I don't, I don't even think we're going to have... And again, that conversation starts. And I remember back in March when the pause happened. And a lot of people saying, well, there won't be a Stanley Cup this year. They're not going to have a season. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's done. Just come back in October. Well, it's October in 10 days... And as I said back in March, how did we know things would be better in October? And I would argue it's not. So that's the whole conversation is the idea of, well, we can just kick the can down the road. It, I understand it, but you kind of have to assume that, that the way things are right now, they may that be that way for at least a while longer. And the NHL has some reasons to stick around. Now, in, in this, next year is a big year for, for the NHL. They extended their collective bargaining agreement in part, I believe, because next year their contract's up in the United States. That's it. So I've talked about this before. I'm going to talk about this from a different angle as well because things have changed since the last time I talked about this. So the New York Islanders and Philadelphia Flyers played their game seven not that long ago, and it had a 1.4 rating in the United States, 2.96 million viewers. Now on the Canadian side of the border, 3 million viewers for a hockey game is pretty good. In the States, that was the most watched NHL game in the U.S. in five years. So while, yes, the ratings have not been fantastic south of the border, we have seen signs that the NHL garners some interest. And it actually outdrew a couple of NBA games that were on that same night. So, yes, uh, summer hockey hasn't been a huge draw, but there are some reasons to think that uh, the NHL right now is garnering some interest. Now, I wanted to contrast this with Vegas versus Vancouver Game 7 only had 829,000 viewers in the U.S. So this is that Canadian team problem that, that American broadcasters would have. And it, it's, it's accurate because Vegas-Vancouver, that series, I think was a more exciting series. It was a very interesting storyline of can Demko shut them out again? And yet the states in general didn't tune in. You get less than a third of the viewers you get for the Islanders Philadelphia, which was a more slow series. And Vegas was supposed to be a Stanley Cup favorite. But again, people will say, well, Philadelphia is a big market. New York's a big market. Great. And those big markets clashed, and it, it created the best ratings uh, for any NHL game in five years. So there is definitely interest in the National Hockey League. And there's reason to continue to create interest in the National Hockey League, meaning you have to play hockey. Yes, there are owners who will lose a lot of money if you play without fans in attendance. And the NHL in general is going to lose money. They know this. This is why we have the flat cap. This is why we got the new collective bargaining agreement. And this is why there's no solid date about when the NHL is coming back after the Stanley Cup finals are done. And right now, I would argue there's too many sports on at the same time. So we've discussed ratings and I think it's simple. There are people who are NFL fans. NFL's back, like, all right, I'm going to watch NFL. Yeah, there's a hockey game on, but I'm going to watch NFL. Major League Baseball, same time as hockey. And again, we have certain leagues where games are just as important as they as, as one another. In Major League Baseball, games are more important right now than in a regular season because regular season, there are 162 games, and this year it's 60. Um, and, and so right now, ratings are affected, but there's another reason, and I'll come back to it. Now, the 10-year deal with NBC ends in 2021. If the National Hockey League doesn't play games, they forfeit the money from both the NBC deal and from Rogers. $200 million a season from NBC, so that's $200 million gone. And then $300 to $500 million, depending on the year, it, it ranges from $300 to $500 million from Rogers. So you're up to at least about a half a billion dollars gone if you decide not to play any games and find a way to make it work whether it's a bubble situation whatever it is if the nhl says forget it we're not going to play that's another half a billion dollars gone and they're still paying these players they all got their bonuses on july 1st they're still getting paid and for some players they haven't played since march there's seven teams worth of players who haven't played a game since march unless they're in europe and so you're looking at a situation where when they get things started, they may have had up to nine months off from hockey. And that's a long time. 
And it, so again, there's a lot of things to consider in this. Now, the NFL, it's a $4.5 billion a year deal they have south of the border uh, with CBS, Fox, NBC, and ESPN. Uh, now, I've seen 4.5 and I've seen 6. I went with the lower of the two. I saw $6 billion a year and I saw 4.5 and I thought I'll go with 4.5 if I'm going to be wrong. I want to lowball it rather than overestimating it. $1.5 billion a year Major League Baseball makes with Fox, TBS, and ESPN. NBA, $2.66 billion a year with ESPN and TNT. So ESPN's got these three. ESPN is the, is the network that the NHL ideally wants to get a deal done with. They're not going to make four and a half billion. They're not going to make two point six six billion. They're not going to make one and a half billion. But they, you've got to think what? So two hundred million dollars, are they worth what? Six hundred million? So let's just say that you triple your deal. You're still making less than half of what Major League Baseball makes, but you've added four hundred million dollars a year to the NHL coffers. You've added four hundred million dollars a year to NHL player salaries, to owners. Everybody partakes in this because the TV deal is split between the league and the players. And that helps to bring the cap up. Now, think about this. You don't have fans in attendance. You want to make more money. You play hockey now. So you play the 2020-2021 season. It's a lot of 20s in there. You play this, this upcoming season with the idea that you at least triple, maybe quadruple this amount. So that the following season, you're making an extra $600 million spread between 31, soon to be 32 teams. That's an extra pretty decent amount of money for each owner. So you can go to an owner who's going to say, man, I'm going to lose, let's say, $15 million if if we play this year without fans in attendance. I'm not, I, I can't do it. And the NHL says, but if you do it, you may make an extra $40 million next year through a new TV deal that we don't have right now. If we play, if we get the ratings, if we find a way to attract viewers, then you make more money later. And again, this is what the whole collective bargaining agreement is about. It's about, we know we're not going to make money for a while. We're aware of that. We're going to have a flat cap. The players know they're not getting a raise for a while. Some players will get raises, but keep in mind, it's going to be a flat cap. It's going to stay the same for at least a couple of years. The NHL knows this. This is why Gary Bettman says all the teams are healthy, the league is healthy, we're good. Because he knows the collective bargaining agreement covers their backsides. If they're short on money, well, that comes back from the players. The players then, that, that escrow money is, is there for a reason. And there's other clawbacks that are in this deal as well. So if this turns even uglier, it's going to be longer before the NHL sees any kind of a rise in salary cap. And the players have already agreed to that. So the NHL, I don't think, breaks a billion on their next deal in the U.S. But if they can get to $600 million, and again, that's less than half of what Major League Baseball is making. You split that between 31 owners, that's a pretty decent raise over the $200 million they're making right now. So there, there are reasons to see uh, what's going on in the sports world right now and say, well, maybe they'd be better off shutting things down. But there's still, there's the business side of it. The NHL's business side of it, you're going to lose money now to make money later. And even for players, you're going to make less money now to make more money later. That's why I think we'll see more of the two-year deals, three-year deals with the idea that two years from now, things should get better and you should be able to make more money. Now, I wanted to talk a bit more about ratings because there's a lot of people taking victory laps on the fact that sports ratings are down and saying, see, I knew people would stop watching sports and there's, there's two. There's, there's pandemic reasons and then there's, you know, the political reasons that people say, that's why people aren't watching. Now, the Emmys were down 12% last night over the year before. And I thought that was noteworthy in that the Emmys didn't have a host last year. This year they did and they dropped 12% in, in views. And I can honestly say it's because for me, I, normally I, I might have an interest in the Emmys, but I didn't really care. I didn't really have any any intent on watching much of it so i just i watched the the opening i saw who won what and eh. and normally i would watch some of that now cable news the ratings on cable news networks from where they were a year ago have skyrocketed they've absolutely gone through the roof cable news is making money hand over fist on ad rates right now whether it's cnn fox news msnbc the the, the three networks in the u.s are doing absolutely bonkers numbers 
where they're made they're getting millions more views per night right now than they were that's siphoning off a lot of the viewership from sports because again there are people who are saying well i i would watch hockey but did you see what happened in the news i gotta watch this program and and get an update on what's going on so you're siphoning off casual fans casual viewers personally for me as soon as hockey came back i'm watching hockey that's a it's my job and b even if i wasn't standing here talking to all you fine people about it i would be watching hockey games every day because that's how i work but it it honestly it, i think it's the casual fans that have tuned out to me you know and I, I i don't get into all the messaging and everything else that's going on i i look at the ratings i look at where we're at and i say you know what it it makes some sense to me that nfl ratings nba and major league baseball nhl they're all existing at the same time right now so again if you're a fan of the nba and the nhl and you're like well there's two games on tonight well i have to watch one and you'll watch one and maybe you pvr the other uh i i do wonder if the dropping ratings for sports right now are going to make ESPN a little more guarded about giving the NHL a deal. But there are other networks the NHL could make a deal with. They could make a deal with Fox. I would be fine with that as long as the Fox tracks puck doesn't come back. Sorry, I don't want the glowing tail back on the puck. And um, yeah, I mean, there are other networks they can go to and that they could potentially sign with. And again, $200 million a year is a lot of money to any one of us, anybody watching that. To me, $200 million, thank you. Uh, but in reality, to professional sports leagues right now, and you can look at the European leagues as well and how much like Bundesliga and, and Premier League and, and Champions League and all these, all their broadcasting rates are ridiculously expensive. And so... The NHL is kind of a step behind with all of this, but they have to find a way to catch up. You can't do that if you shut down for the 2020-2021 season. You can't. Basically, what the NHL would be saying if they don't find some way to have a season next year is, we really don't like to have money, and we've decided we're going to become completely irrelevant where we've been trying so hard for so long to break through. And as a Canadian fan, I, I get the, the resentment because for fans in Canada, we kind of feel like we're taken for granted that the money Rogers pays isn't good enough, that that the NHL's coveting that American dollar, but the American marketplace is 10 times bigger than Canada's. You have 300 million people in the States. You have 30 some million people in Canada. If you can get a certain portion of the population in the States to, to watch your broadcasts and an American dollar is worth more than a Canadian dollar, it makes sense to pursue that and it is it is there's a resentments there on the on the canadian side and i get it but what the what the nhl is going to do is i think they're going to continue to pursue that american dollar and ironically they've done it with the playoffs and part of the reason we have playoffs right now is to fulfill those tv contracts in the u.s so they didn't lose the money this year that's part of the reason they had to come back so you have to have some sort of season or you're losing fans, you don't have any ratings if you're not on TV, and you have absolutely no chance of cashing in next year. Because if I'm NBC, if I'm Fox, if I'm ESPN, and Gary Bettman comes to me and says, so uh, we, we're we going to talk to you guys about a TV deal, I might say, you know what, we're doing fine with what we've got. You guys haven't even been on TV in, what, a year? And you guys did that summer playoffs thing, and the ratings were kind of mixed. I don't know. I, I don't see us giving you more than the $200 million you were making with NBC. That seems fair to me for a league that hasn't played for a year. So it's it's a it's a, a, a really tough balancing act the NHL has. The balancing act between the, the monetary side of it, you have the safety side of it as well, where there's players, uh, coaches, families of players, and everybody in and around the league. And, and of course, for fans, if you're going to allow them into the stands, but you also have to look to the future and you have to say, okay, so we're not going to be in this state forever and we want to make sure the decisions we make now don't punish us for the next 10 years. And the NHL could very well punish itself for the next 10 years if there isn't a 2020-2021 season on some level. So I'll be interested to see what they come up with. I did the video yesterday on you know when the season could start and how you'd make it work, but I, I do want to discuss why it has to happen. So... Uh, and again, I know I've discussed this, I want to say it was a, a few months ago, but, um, you know, the story the story changes because now we have ratings. 
where we can look at Major League Baseball, NBA, NFL, and, and NHL and say, well, the ratings have been down a lot. But again, I think, you know, when you look at where views are right now, cable news is where it's at. Uh, ridiculously high numbers for cable news. And that's just how that works. And I understand people not watching. But I am here for those who say, cable news is depressing. I'd rather watch something else. And here's my videos. Uh, and, and for those of us who, who needed that mental uh, a break from everything going on in the world around us that sports provides, it's there. And I think that sports in general, I think they knew that the ratings would be down. Uh, existing during a pandemic will do that. But uh, I, I do think they'll, they'll bounce right back once we have some sense of normalcy going on. And it's, it's ratings all over. So, all right. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.